Hello everybody, this is Brightside, and this is my first drawing tutorial. This is digital art, of course. Uh, first things first, I should mention I used Metabang, and it's a decent program, I think you'll like it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be used for the guide, but it definitely helps with uh, orientation and layout, etc. Uh, it's very bare bones, you can check it out. Uh, Alright, so, as you can tell, the first thing I do with my realism portrait style is I find a base color. It's usually the mid-tone of the image I want to create. Uh, some people start with a black and white, uh, but I don't do that when I use realism, at least not most of the time. My style changes, I have to read that I work with. Uh, in this case, and this style, I always start with my mid-tone. And then, if you'll notice, I start working with browns and reds. Uh, and the reason why is because browns and reds, no matter what skin tone you are, there's plenty of those in every facial feature under most normal lighting principles. And you'll find that I sometimes will start off with one lighting principle and change it along the way. It's something I, that I do. I, I can't really break myself of it. So, uh, like I said, this is a tutorial in my realism style. Also, if you'll notice that even though I'm working on the full real estate of the face, I firstly focused on the eye. I like to do that because, I don't know, it's just something I've always done is, is I like to have the eyes looking at me because if the eyes aren't sitting right, it throws off everything for me. Like, I will lose interest in creating something if the eyes aren't staring back at me. I guess I'm just uh, naturally a glutton for creepiness. Uh, but if you'll notice, again, like I said, my reds and my browns are going in right now. I'm not really focusing on all of the little details. I just want to get the bigger factors. Because, let's face it, it's like cartography in the beginning. you got to get all these landmarks on the face put in there so that you can guide yourself when you get in with the real small details. And, yes, I'm guilty of, like what I'm doing now, sometimes I'll put way too much realistic concept and detail right into the eyes right away. I don't know. I just do it. Now, skin tone itself, it, it's tricky. Uh, for this purpose, I've actually created a few different brushes. Uh, I use a splatter brush that you can download from Metabang. If you set up for an account, there's a bunch of brushes you can download. And I have, of course, slightly altered it so that it's uh, not as strong. You know, strength is lowered. But um, it's, it's a good brush. I use it for skin toning. And I also have a brush that I've created myself. Uh, it's in my skin folder, skin texture folder. And it's a bunch of intersecting lines that create the effect of, you know, skin cells close together, worn skin. And you'd be surprised how much that really changes the landscape of your realistic portrait. Especially if you're working with a larger image. Those details, when you pull back and the computer has to make up for the lack of pixels and it kind of blurs it out, it creates a, a look that's hard for a human being to naturally achieve without having done it in a large form and then pull it back first. Very important that you make sure that you get your lights and your shadows in the right place, but uh, I'm, I'm a very strong recommended, or I recommend strongly that you always use dark tones from your original color scheme. Like for the hair example, I would take that, I would sample it, and I would darken it to my level for shadows. I would not go with a black and blending, because as you know, you can find a blending brush, and if you go with black, it'll blend the brown and the black together on its own. It doesn't always come out the color you want, and you lose control of how much of these colors are blended at any given time, so I like to work with a solid, definite color. That way, if I spend, spend too much time in one spot, I'm not going to make it too dark. I'm going to make it just the right level of dark because I have controlled my tone in pre-selection. Now, hair in this case, I'm just getting it on there. I'm doing the real estate right now. Uh, I'm still not done with the skin tone, but I wanted to work on other things because with, with me, if I work too much on skin tone alone, then I will get frustrated. So it's rare that I actually work on the clothes more than right away because most of the time I, uh, I wait to the end and, and spend time on the end filling those in. I guess I consider that the caboose of the train, so to speak. Uh, in this case, I was trying to find something to distract me from the skin tone not turning out the way I wanted it to at this point. And so in battling my frustrations, I thought, hey, let's do this jacket that he's wearing. I thought about adding the denim textured look to it, but then I changed my mind and I just used clouding effects 
And as you can see when I'm shading, I specifically make sure that I control the blue in shadows. I'm not using true blacks. Not, well, maybe once or twice just to get the tone that I want to sample. A little darker because sometimes I'll do that. I'll take a black and I'll use a blending brush and I'll run it through there. And then I'll sample that and go back to my original brush. It's one of the techniques I use. Uh, but yeah, nonetheless, um, once you get, the only time that I would ever do clothing before I did skin tone is if I'm working on a full body pick and there's more real estate of clothing than there is of the face or the skin in general. Because for me, the large portions, I want to draw the eye there, so I'm going to spend more time working on it. And everyone's patience has a limit. If I'd spent too much time on this, then I would have gotten frustrated or I would have started doubting myself. Now, it's possible you can take a break, come back to it. It's fine. Never stress yourself out over, over your creativity. Creativity is supposed to be fun. If it stops being fun, then you're doing something wrong. Change how you do it. Now, see here, I'm, I'm shifting perspective. You saw earlier that I was uh, shifting the chin a little bit. He's got a very tricky jawline. It's one of the reasons why he's good at playing the characters that he does. I, it, I didn't get it right the first time, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to readjust it again. Now, see here... I'm throwing in these dark tones because I'm not happy with the level of light shiningness that I'm getting off of him. And I'm like, what's wrong with this? I can't figure it out. So what I did was is I hit a higher lev level of uh, browns and reds, and then I keep softening them because it was too dark. He looked like some sort of uh, victim of some sort of rash. And I just kept going back and forth because, as you can see, I'm splatter brushing and, and texture brushing. And, of course, the coarseness is giving it that sense of skin tone. But now he looks like some sort of freckly person, that, that, and it's not how he looks in reality. So I mean, I'm just I'm I'm trying to figure out why the color is not working right here. And experimentation in skin tone is very important, even if it doesn't look exactly like the person. It's important that you figure out how to get as close as you can because it will help you in the future to learn how to better do your realism arms. And of course, none of this is necessary if you're not going for realism. If you're just going for like uh, surrealistic, close to realistic, semi-realistic anime style, you definitely don't need none of the skin tone details. But if you're somebody who wants it to look as real as you can, then invest your time in learning how to do lights over darks, layering of splattering and textures. This will make your realism pop. And that's what I'm going here. It takes a lot longer to layer your textures over top of each other to get the light scheme you want just like real human skin would probably take a long time and even like in a 3d game rendering engine the more texture that you have that re reacts to light in different ways the more ram it requires well the same is true for the human eye the more detail you see the less you question the validity of the image so of course Get your textures right, people will be like, oh, I thought that was a picture. Oh, you mean you, you actually painted that? Oh, that's amazing. So, textures. And for me, that's a lot of over and over again in the same area. See the tongue. I just hit the tongue with a layer of white particles to give it that sense of wetness. It's very important to know how to create that effect. And if you experiment with a texture brush, something that splatters, something that has coarseness, you'll figure it out. Here I'm shifting the tone. I like to drop the dark levels down lower, way past where I want them. And then I will use my yellows, my whites, and my lighter reds to bring this realistic image back to the light level that I want. It's the way that I achieve a more glowing skin look. But it's my preference. Some people can literally grind it down using dark tones right to where they need it. And I'm not one of those. I have to do what works for me. You may yourself prefer to work with dark patterns in skin toning and not work your way up in elevation from dark to light like I do. It's all a matter of what's comfortable for you. 
but I know that textures are required either way. So now I'm looking at the image and I see that his wrinkles are starting to have elevation appearance because of the lightness that I've put into them. And I'm trying to capture the right tone of light in this scenario. Because I don't want him to look jaundice. I want him to have the right tone. His lights need to have a little more yellow, a little more white, but I gotta keep my skin tone. And again, there's the jaw giving me trouble. I doubted myself so many times on this jawline. And of course, you know how I did that, or, or I'm gonna explain it now. I used the lasso tool, which almost every program, our program has a lasso tool. I selected an area, and then I resized it using the manipulation option, which every program has. Uh, and I, of course, I, I free transformed that way I could control the angle of the jawline and try to redesign it the way that his jawline looks because that's that's the whole point is to make it look like the person. All right, now with the hair here, which I noticed his forehead isn't exactly the way that the person looks, so I had to fix that. Uh, it actually was hard for me because I'd already invested in him looking that way. And then when I changed it, I was like, oh, it looks more like the reference now, but it feels wrong. And see, with his hair, he had a he has a like a good brown, but of course my light tones. I have a, a folder called light, uh, or hair rather, and in that folder I have a couple things like a sharp pen that I use for my highlights, which like I said, I will take and use a blending brush to brighten something and then I'll use that mixture as a base sample to retone it and at this point I'm just playing around with the, his you know features you know just goofing off I'd already achieved the light level that I wanted and I had gotten his hair tones the way I wanted uh, remember not too many small strokes blend where there's less light in the hair and where there's more light make sure that your highlights are strong but not completely uncharacteristic of your color and it's not done until you're satisfied with it so always remember you need to back up look at the whole picture flip it if you need to some people do for perspective in real estate and maybe take 10 minute break uh, go have a cup of coffee come back and look at it again before you publish it because you may spot flaws that you don't like this has been my guy